Hey traders, welcome back to the channel. In today's live trading session, I am going to share you my proven strategy to achieve big gains in the market. We're talking about identifying the right stocks, mastering risk management, and using technical indicators that will inform you about the trading decisions you make in every day. But whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, this video is packed with valuable insight that can help you take your trading to that next level. But before we dive in, let me emphasize one critical aspect, risk management. Trading without a solid risk management is like sailing without a life jacket and it's dangerous and it often leads to losses. Today, I will demonstrate how to manage your risk effectively while targeting substantial profits. So grab a notepad, get comfortable, and let's dive into the specifics of my powerful trading strategy. All right, let's start with part number one. We need to talk about risk management. When you trade in today's markets, you gotta make sure that you could even buy the stock. And a lot of you are trading the market and looking at some of these stocks and they just basically have very big spreads, very small tier sizes, which means a lot of not a lot, a lot of buyers and sellers on a bid and offer. And then you're going out there and you're trading something that is just way too volatile. You have to understand something. There are over 25,000 stocks are trading in today's markets. You cannot trade every single one of them. But let me show you exactly what we look for before we even consider finding the right stock, which is going to give us the least amount of risk with the high amount of reward. So what we're gonna look at is a couple of stocks and I'm gonna show you the risk management part of it, which is tradable and not tradable. It's part of the spread. It's one of the reasons why 50% of the people fail in today's markets. So we're looking at a stock right now, Tesla. And you can see Tesla right here. Um, and what's important that a lot of people neglect is they don't really ever look at the spread. And the spread is where the buyers and sellers are located. So right here on the left-hand side, these are your buyers and these are your sellers. And what I want you to notice here very carefully is when you look at the buy side, you look at the sell side, you'll notice that the buyers out here are looking to buy at 256.11, and the sellers out here are looking to sell it at 256.17. But the other big thing you have to focus on is the size. You'll notice the size is really, really small. So when you wanna go out there and you wanna to try to find a stock and make the most amount of money as possible with the least amount of risk, this is not a really good sign of a stock to go out there and trade because you're talking about a more expensive stock out there. But when you look at a stock like this that was moving today, like um, NAAS, which I really don't care what the company does as a trader, all I care is risk management. Here you're looking at a stock that's up 63% today. Now, look at the risk to reward on this stock. This stock ran from $2.75. In about an hour and a half, it ran to a whopping set of $4.57. But the big thing is, not that it's just that cost less expensive and it had a great movement of volatility. The big thing is the spread because sometimes inexpensive stocks will have big spreads. And you'll notice right here, if you look at the spread, you got 456 versus 463. And you could see that the tier sizes, meaning there are bigger sizes than you saw in Tesla, where you're seeing 47 and 144, which means that you have a lot more buyers out there because you can multiply that by 100, meaning there is 4,700 and 14,400, meaning if you want to buy 1,000 shares, you can get in and out of it. When you deal with a stock like Tesla, like I showed you earlier again, and I'll show you to you again, the spreads there where tier sides are only showing at 100 shares. So you could see a very high risk with a very, very little reward. And that's what day traders look at first. Now that we know a little bit about the spread and the risk management, now I need to show you how to find and scan those stocks in the market today. Because once again, to make that really nice profit in today's markets, you have to know not only what you're risking, which is 50% of the failure rate, but now we have to focus on how we're going to find those stocks and have that right strategy to get that most profit out of that stock. Now we're gonna work off our big percentage gainers and losers. So when you look on the left-hand side, you'll see right here, we have a lot of stocks that are moving in today's markets. So you could see all the big active gainers, losers on the NASDAQ and the New York, and that's what we're gonna focus on. Now, as we're going through this list, 
There's a lot of stocks that are up about 128%. You can see stocks up 69%. 63%. And we kind of like to stick with stocks with a minimum of a 10% move or higher. And we're looking for stocks with very, very tight spreads. With a, with a tighter spread, we're always protecting our downside. Remember, risk management is very critical why most people lose in the market, which probably leads to about 80 to 90%. So finding the stocks they're simple. It's right through your big percentage gainers and losers. But what you have to do is you just have to make sure as you're going through them is that if you're buying it, there's buyers out there you could buy from and there's sellers you could sell it to and the amount of shares that you're looking to get. And remember, don't buy and sell stocks that you can't afford. Don't go out there and risk something more than you have to. Because remember, if you're trading a stock and let's say the spread is like this one right here, to buy a thousand shares, it's not going to really happen. You only be able to get a hundred for one, a uh, hundred shares from the person here at three ninety seven, and other hundred shares at four twenty nine. I mean, the spread can get really, really big. And even on brand name stocks, they do it on all of them. But you can't go out there and trade these stocks without without knowing if those buyers and sellers are out there, so you can get in and out of them. Now, let me show you how to go out there and risk and make almost 50% on your money in less than one hour trading in today's markets just by finding the right stock and be at the right place at the right time. Let me show you how this stock had a really good movement early in the morning and within less than one hour, you could have made 50% of your money. We're looking at the stock VRPX, very inexpensive stock. You could see it right here. It was on the fifth biggest percentage gainer of the market uh, right here. So that stock, very inexpensive, not that much money, less than a dollar, okay, a little bit more than a dollar, dollar fifty. But look what happened here at the open. At 9.30, this stock literally ran from a dollar ten, and by 10.30, the stock went to a whopping $1.70. You're talking literally almost a 60 cent move. You know what? If you just made 25% of that move, you probably would have made about $200. If you do that every day, that's a $50,000 salary. If you bought, if you made 50 cents on that trade and you did that every day, an hour a day, you would have made yourself a nice $100,000 salary. And that's why a lot of people love the art of trading. You don't have to trade all day. You could just trade a stock very inexpensive like this. But the next thing you probably gonna need to know, which I'm going to show you within this video, is how do we know it's going to go up and how do we know it's going to stop where it stopped. And that's where the strategy comes around. But before you get to the strategy, you got to understand the risk management and where to find them. Let's look at NVIDIA, that same example. Big issue with NVIDIA is this. We all know NVIDIA, brand name stock, Fabulous 7, everybody loves trading it. But there's only one problem, the risk to reward. The stock we saw earlier, if we bought 1,000 shares, it would cost us $1,000. If you want to buy 1,000 shares in NVIDIA, it would cost you over $125,000. But let's just say you even bought 100 shares of that stock. If that stock literally moved, from here at 100 shares at $25 and within the same time frame and ran about an hour and ran to about $27. The stock ran $2. $2 on 100 shares is $200. You would have risked 10 times less and you would have made over 10 times more on that position trading the other stock than trading a stock like NVIDIA. And that's where the risk to reward comes in. Sometimes NVIDIA might be a good trade to trade over you know, uh, certain days. Maybe earnings announcements, maybe another AI announcement. But there are so many stocks out there to trade will give you so much more risk with a lot more reward. And this is an example why you wanna stay away from stocks like this in today's types of markets versus trading something that is a lot less expensive. Let's talk about the secret weapon. The secret weapon that I use that we teach our traders is level three and level four quotes. That is the big tool that now we're gonna find out how and where to get in these stocks and where to get at it. Let me just remind you about one thing. Everyone out there looks for support levels. Support levels do not exist unless 
those buyers are out there that make that support levels. And those resistance levels do not exist unless those sellers are out there selling it. So let me show you how that secret weapon works. Here we're looking at a stock that had a really nice move that was a very inexpensive stock in a short period of time made a big, big pop. We're looking at a stock called NAS, NAAS. And you'll see right here, right around the 9.30 time frame, the stock literally ran from 260 up to $4. Now, why did it go up all the way up to four dollars why did it stop right around that price well it's very simple it must have been resistance well when you look here on the chart down here at the bottom you'll notice that you have support resistance levels pretty much all over the place and when you draw a trend line right here if i drew that four dollar price range you might say somewhere eh, maybe a little bit higher you might project it and say, you know what, it wasn't four. I probably think it was a little bit higher than that. But it didn't. It didn't go to that resistance level, and I'll show you why. We Here is something that we use that's called level four. Now, level four is going to show us where are all these big iceberg orders, which are big block orders. This is where the algorithms are. This is where the high-frequency trades are. This is what we're looking for. And if you notice right here at the bottom, around 9.30 this morning, when the market opened up, these orders showed up right there. Those orders are these big orders right here. So you have those big orders of 22,000, 18,000. Listen, there are buyers at every price level, but they're not that large, 100, 4,000, 1,000, 600. You're talking a very substantial amount of orders at that specific number of Three, uh, 397 and just above 410. And you'll notice that once the stock went up there, guess what? It specifically stopped right there. Why there? Because of those orders. Now you have to understand something. The only way that this stock is going to continue to go higher is one of two things has to happen. That seller has to cancel or two, Somebody like you or somebody else has to buy from them. But until now, from 9.30 this morning until almost 11 o'clock, this parader has been out there and he is not going anywhere until someone executes him. And that is the big mistake what people make. You want to trade in today's markets, you have to follow the big block orders. If you think you're smarter than Wall Street, great. Well, watch what happens when you come up to that order. And if you don't get out there before they do, guess what? You're going to get caught holding the bag and the stock's going to go down. Now, they do this on every single stock. And this is just one of them that I'm just showing you. And the reason I'm showing you this specific one is because it's not a lot of risk out there to trade it. Because remember, we can do this on NVIDIA. We could do this on Tesla. Or we could do this on Apple. We could do it on every brand name stock. And guess what? You will see those stocks out there and they'll have the same exact ones. But the only problem is if you're trying to start out and you don't have a lot of money and you can't trade where you, you know those big amount of shares and you don't want to trade them because then you say, well, I could always trade the option. Well, that's not going to work either. If you want to be a good options trader, you want to be a good swing trader, you got to understand what happens over the course of the day. And the day is risk management and finding out where those big orders are. Now, as you're seeing, showing you all these different stocks, we have to focus on position size. So let me show you what and how position size can make a big factor on how much you could make on the account size that you have. Getting back to this stock, NAAS, you could see the price of the stock is roughly around $4.50. Now, to buy 1,000 shares of this stock, let me tell you a mistake that people make. It will cost you $4,500. Now, if you come from an account that, let's say, you're starting with, with uh, $20,000, okay, um, does it mean you could buy 4,000 shares of the stock, okay? Well, I have all this money, so why buy 1,000? Traders never look at you know their account balance. Just because I had that money means I could spend it. So a thousand dollars of a stock like this one that will cost you forty five hundred is the same dollar that you could make on a thousand shares on a hundred dollar stock. So going out there and trading a stock that's more expensive, yes, you're gonna need more money. And no matter how the stock moves, you're going to make the same percentage and the same amount of money. So the risk to reward there is very big. Where you're looking at Bank of America, you have to risk to make the same amount of points 
because that's what we do in trading on a point system, not on a dollar system. But to buy 1,000 shares of Bank of America, this stock, you have to buy $44,000. You have to risk, if it moves 50 cents, you made the 500. If you trade a stock like LCFY, if you bought 1,000 shares of this stock, it's a $5,000 investment. If it moves 50 cents, that's the same $500. The big difference is less risk, more reward, biggest percentage gainer on it. And that's what we look for as professional day traders. It's all about following the orders and risking less with a high amount of reward. Now, being a successful trader is having realistic goals. Going out there and just saying, you know what? I'm here. This is Vegas. I want to try to make as much money as possible. And where, wherever the dice fall, wherever I put down, whatever I win, I win. That's not how you become a consistent trader. Great traders never buy at the bottom and we never sell it by top. We always buy in between. So have a realistic goal is this. If you're somebody that just wants to make $50,000 a year, okay, all you got to focus on is making $200 a day. That's it. $200 to make that is a thousand shares and a stock has to move 20 cents. That's it. 20 cents. You could do two trades a day at 10 cents a piece and you could make that ultimate goal. So don't be overwhelmed with all these people showing you these stacks of cash and these people making millions and millions of dollars because you have to understand something. To make that much money, you have to be willing to risk that much. If you're new to trading, try to start small. Build up your confidence. The way you build up your confidence is you have to trade. If you want to make less money, make less. But it doesn't take that much to get to that level. Think about it. If you made 50 cents on 1,000 shares, that's $500 a day. That's $100,000 salary. If you make a dollar a day and you see stocks move dollars, $3, $10, $20, all you need is that $1 move. It's $1,000 a day. It's a quarter million dollar salary. So when it comes to trading, have realistic goals and try not to risk more than you can afford to lose. Try to focus on that day's pay. And as you're consistent, you could reach and do more down the road and try to hit higher goals. But you can't reach there, those higher goals, if you can't even make the little goals first. One of the hardest things to do as a trader is taking those profits. Actually, 80% of the people lose money in trading because they just don't know when to take a loss. So we work on something called the 30-second rule. The 30-second rule means that if you waited and specifically at that time that that stock was going to go up and you bought it, and if you bought that stock and it doesn't move within 30 seconds, nine out of 10 times, if you do journaling, you'll see that that's a losing trade. Because remember, you've been patiently waiting for that stock to come to your price to get at that limit order. And at that, that, that moment, it was supposed to go up because you did, you know, you waited for the big buyers out there. You waited to hit that major support level out there. And that's where it was supposed to go change direction. But the hardest thing to do in trading is taking losses. So with the 30 second rule, there also comes a time where, you know, if it breaks the 30 second rule, you just got to take a loss. And sometimes you might not like taking losses, but you might not have no choices. Listen, I lose money as a trader. I've trained students and they lost money in trading. But the thing is, I don't look as losing as a bad thing. I look at it as a good thing. If you know why you lost, you're gonna not do that again. You learn from your losses. If you can't learn from your mistakes, you'll never be a successful trader. You have to expect that you're going to lose in trading. It's part of the game. So by learning how to control those losses, that's what's gonna help you not make those mistakes on future trades. And the way you have to look at it this, when you break through a major support level, like it or not, it's going down to the next support level. Now that next support level could be 10 cents, it could be 50 cents, it could be three, $4, okay? Like it or not, it's gonna go there. And the only way it's gonna go there is by using that secret weapon that I showed you on level three and level four. Because where those orders are is the only thing that's gonna help you to know where it's gonna bounce. Because you don't wanna get hold holding the bag. You get caught holding the bag, well, we all know what ends up happening. Losing is all about controlling losses. Let's look what happened to NVIDIA if you did not take a loss 
in a trade if you jumped in too early. You're looking at NVIDIA here right at the open, and the stock started right around the $29 price range, almost even the 30 And the stock literally came all the way back down and stopped all the way to here. Now, if you were one of the people that bought it early in the morning, like it or not, this stock was going down to the price of 125. Now, if you knew that, you probably would have sold it at 128. You probably would have sold it at 127. But you end up holding it all the way down. Now, why did it drop all the way down to this price? Like it or not, this is the main reason why. If you look right here where we follow the big iceberg orders, you will notice that there was a big buyer out here when the market opened up at 125. Actually, he's been out there all day. This, this buyer. So, wondering why you should have got out? Well, it was because these green, these red balls, what they stand for is selling. And the bigger the ball, the more selling that's going on. And if they're selling and the street's selling, you don't want to be caught holding the bag. But what ends up happening in a situation like this is like it or not, you need to know when and where it's going to stop. And right here is the only thing that's supporting you right here, right now, is those buyers at 125. Now, can it break through 125? Absolutely. Anything can happen. These 600,000 share sellers might get done. And if they do get done and you get caught hole in the bag, like it or not, the next biggest buyer is at 120. So if you want to know where to get in and where to get out, and you want to know when to take a loss, and you want to know what risk management has to do when it comes to trading, it's about following the orders. And if you're not following the orders, you're trading blind. Like it or not, if it's not them there out there holding it, then you're on the wrong side of trading the market. And there you have it, traders. That's how I use my proven strategy to aim for big gains in the market. I hope you found this live trading session informative and you were able to pick up some valuable tips to enhance your trading. Remember, the key to success in trading is a combination of a solid strategy and effective risk management and understanding the market psychology. If you have any questions, or if there's any specific topics that you want me to cover in future videos, drop me a comment right below. I would love to hear from you. And you know what? That will help you on your future journey to trading. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content just like this, do me a favor, click on the bottom, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring that bell and check your inbox for notifications every time because I go live and I always posting up new videos. Also, if you're looking for more in-depth trading and more resources, hey, head over to Cyber Trading University's website. Learn more about our training courses and our live online trading room designed to take your trading skills to the next level. Thank you for watching and always happy trading. See you in the next upcoming video.